And we are following breaking news this hour out of Maryland. This is where a cargo ship crashed into a major bridge, causing it to collapse, sending cars and people flying into the water. Our coverage continues with CBS News Baltimore. Uh, so there are just so many people impacted by this. Uh, and it's really just something that they, when you look outside, a lot of people who live on this side of the, uh, in the Anne Arundel County side uh, of their vantage point, they're so used to seeing this key bridge every single time they wake up, uh, look out into the water, into the distance, and now that's no longer. So it's just, uh, it's taken a lot of people back. Um, people, again, showed up in, in tears, just in such shock. Uh, so that just paints a picture on how this, tragedy, this unthinkable tragedy has impacted this community and beyond. All eyes really right now focused on Baltimore. Uh, but the focus, of course, officials have said is recovery efforts, praying for all those people, families impacted by this, and the first responders who have been out here since that first call uh, trying to rescue everybody. Now we, this is a multi-state agency uh, response. We've seen crews from Anne Arundel County, Howard County, PG County, uh, many, many uh, agencies coming out here to assist with their rescue boats. Um, as far as the cargo ship that we've learned collided with the key bridge. Uh, we were told that no one on board was injured, uh, but they are contacting uh, through the Coast Guard. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, as far as recovery efforts in the water, uh, they were battling darkness for many hours, but right now the, the, the sun is out. So, um, that is kind of on their side, but they are also working against time. But, um, we are also wanted to share some sound of, of community members who arrived on scene here. So take a listen. I, I drive a lot, right? Okay. I was in my driveway and my granddaughter showed me the picture of the bridge collapsing. I went down the other place to see and I couldn't see and I was going to come here and see. But it's surprising. It's just yeah. the bridge she just collapsed. I was there not even not, yesterday. I took the people home on the other side of Key Bridge. They live in Dundalk. And to see the bridge gone, knowing I was on the bridge about even 10, 10 hours ago, it's devastating and because I could have been there. Yeah, just so, so hard to take in. Yeah, people travel this. This just goes to show this is a very well-traveled uh, road, bridge. Thousands of people travel across this bridge every single day. I travel across it literally every single week. So this is just very impactful throughout the community. Um, again, we were told from uh, officials that this is over the next 8 to 12 hours. You can expect to see crews out here as uh, recovery efforts are underway. Again, this is just a long road ahead and we'll of course keep you updated as soon as we learn more we'll send it back to you guys for now thank you very much of course uh, with the story that we've been following all night long uh, since it first happened this morning around 1 30 or so uh this bridge collapse uh over the tapsco river uh the francis scott key bridge of course uh we are a big transportation area uh a lot of commuters uh, a lot of people who need to, uh, to get from point a to point b uh, via their cars we're checking now with angela foster has been monitoring traffic for us and giving us some alternate routes Thank you, Vic. On the roads right now, I will tell you the impacts that are being felt are mostly going to be for folks who live in the neighborhoods surrounding the bridge. But, of course, the impacts are going to be held for folks who travel through the interstates and head through Baltimore. A lot of people who travel 95, especially trans, uh, traveling with those tractor trailers, they normally take the key bridge because they are prohibited from going into the tunnels. But with the bridge collapse, our number one alternate route we are suggesting is that you you head through the city 95 and interstate 895 as your alternate routes if you happen to get caught on that side of the bridge through dundalk not knowing you'll be detoured to the peninsula expressway where we're already seeing some color on our map with the bailout route north point boulevard broning highway as well as dundalk avenue also going to be carrying a lot of bailout traffic now if you're on the anne arundel uh, county side heading through curtis bay maryland 10 the arundel express 
Expressway. That's going to be your point of entry and exit. If you're traveling on 10, they're going to detour you onto the inner loop, of course. And if you're on the outer loop, they're going to take you off of 695 and you'll get on Maryland 10 southbound. So we're already starting to see some backups in that area. Now, the problem with getting into the Harbor Tunnel, you may see MDTA officials there stopping some of these tractor trailers because those in excess of 13 feet 6 inches in height or 8 feet wide will be prohibited from entering the Harbor Tunnel. And we are seeing a lot more delays now for those traveling on 95 into the Fort McHenry Tunnel. So just be prepared. Giving you a live look as we step away here. This is 95 southbound already seeing delays out of Rosedale toward that Fort McHenry Tunnel. Okay, thank you very much. And of course, uh, information is coming in from uh, a number of different areas. We have a, a tweet right now yeah, that uh, came in from Dave Statter. Right? Yes, we're monitoring reactions on uh, social media. Here's sort of an image of, uh, of where this crash happened. You can see a picture of the vessel, the, uh, the dolly that we've been talking about all morning as well. Uh, Dave has been talking about uh, just sort of the exact um, stats and figures regarding this vessel. Uh, he said early, uh, let's see, let's get to the latest here. Uh which is impossible for us to read on the screen. I'm just right going to get a bit closer so we can read it here. He says, key up, uh, bridge update four. Here's more on the container ship that struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge, bridge via vessel finder. Uh, we can see uh, some of sort of the stats there on the on the left of your screen. Gross tonnage there, 95,128 built in 2015. Um, some more stats about the bridge as well. And uh, apparently it was... Uh, not going very fast, obviously, it's, the speed zero knots. I mean, it was basically just kind of coasting at the time that this actually occurred. Uh, and uh, this, uh, it didn't take very much in terms of them, this massive ship hitting that uh, that pylon and bringing down the bridge. Uh, Dave Statter, of course, uh, giving us additional information there on the dolly, uh, the ship that you, the container ship that you see right there, uh, and uh, the fact that it is uh, caused devastating damage uh, to the uh, Key, Francis Scott Key Bridge, uh, completely collapsing. Rest, search and rescue efforts underway at this very moment. The Coast Guard with multiple uh, vehicles and ships in the water right now, searching along with um, some from very uh, a number of uh, different agencies around Baltimore. Uh, just about every surrounding county has sent personnel here to help out. And we understand Governor Westmore is now at the site uh, of this bridge uh, uh, at this collapse now. We mentioned earlier that he sent a statement declaring a state of emergency here in Maryland. He is now in Baltimore attending to the scene of this collapse.